Hello, this is Elijah Ignatieff of the School of Conscious Communication. We are entering into a new world. We are entering into the world where the teacher is replaced by the video and the internet is the global mind that we are all connecting into. Each of us is looking for a way to make a living through a laptop. This is possible, but you need the infrastructure and you need the marketing to do so. There are so many talented people out there, so many teachers and originators with brilliant knowledge fields with incredible things to teach, but they don't have a medium to get to the students. And even if they did, they don't know how to build them or how to organize them. Right now, there's so many different infotech apps and software programs out there that need to be put together to formulate the best platform for learning. This takes time, this takes effort, and this takes a team of people working together continuously to find out the best ways to do something. So right now, in the School of Conscious Communication, we are opening the doors to attract those people that wish to participate in an online, offline, experiential learning world that is yet to be created. This is an introduction to the School of Conscious Communication to those people who want to participate in the act of creation of a whole new world. This video is the beginning of qualifying your interest, your attitude, your love to find out what you really want to do and to design a place within the school for you. So if you're interested in participating, send me an email here and let's look at how we're going to change this world into a more peaceful direction together. I think one big thing that you're probably facing is trying to figure out who's in and who's out. And this is more a sort of at an energetic level of right configuration of which people match with one another in a team and making sure that you have all the different sort of pieces of the puzzle and types of people to get that team to where they want to go. And there are various types of uh, personality profiles that you can use to figure out who is best working with who. And I'm sure with 13 teams, it might be nice to be able to rearrange some of the people on some of the teams or even get rid of some of the people or bring some new people in that you know would, would, would really fit well. But that is not an easy thing to do when you've had all these people put so much time and effort in. And who's to say who goes where? Who's to say who stays and who goes? And that's probably one of the, the biggest things that you're facing right now. A sort of new type of qualification program to go from wherever you're at now into the next phase of what you're doing. And so in order to do so, there has to be some sort of process to find out which people really need to be on each team, which people need to leave, and which new people need to come in. And that's probably one of the hardest things that you're facing right now. Right. Another big question would be how to fund everything, how to become sustainable in a financial way, both for the team members of each of the 13 teams and then for yourselves as the stewardship team. And how do you structure what you have now and how do you transform that into something that becomes a viable, let's say, business operation or stays within the parameters of some sort of philanthropic organization that gets funding uh, from somewhere. So you don't actually have to make money, but someone is supporting you and either perhaps doing both or perhaps some other new innovative way of doing it online by getting support from the people that are watching you. And so this is another big piece of the puzzle, I think, that you guys are trying to figure out. Another big piece of the puzzle that you're trying to figure out 
I would imagine is how to schedule time, how much time to schedule towards what, and how does that integrate with everyone's lives? Because I imagine that most people or probably have their own methodology of making a living. And then you have the work that you're doing with the CL Foundation. There may be some who, you know, have their own private means and don't have to. And some maybe that are living on the borderline in some unique way. And everyone is, is needing to provide an income. And so how do you balance the time that is put in as a gift versus the time where you're being paid as the time where uh, you're, you know, being of service in some methodology that is being recorded, but right now isn't being paid. So that time scheduling for so many people and to synchronize them, I would imagine is also a very big concern. And then another, uh, thing you're pondering is okay who to bring in as outside consultants and what part of the puzzle are they going to do and how are they going to work together and how are they going to be compensated and how do they integrate with all the other people that we're interacting with do they stay on the outside or do they become on the inside and that is another big piece of the puzzle, which of course this video is very linked to. Like in most situations, the three big pillars of people, time, and money, and the people being on the inside and the people being on the outside, and these being the four primary areas that we're all looking at right now. And so I guess part of what I have to do is show you how the tools and the processes which I've been coming up with are going to help you to figure this out and to actually use the tools in order to proceed. I'd also like to add in a fifth category, and that's the wild card. That's the interaction of the spiritual transformation of everyone involved and how sort of weird and mysterious that is and how do you bring that into something that is trying to be more structured and something that is trying to um, get somewhere and so you have these two methodologies sort of the structured approach where we're actually trying to do something and then the true spiritual transformation where either through an act of grace or through who knows how spirit interacts with all of us and all of us together and what ceremonies and rituals that we add into the picture to really connect into uh, the new paradigm in a way that, that works. I'd like to add a, a sixth piece of the puzzle and that's my own blocks that I'm really coming up across where I have to sort of go from this 25 years of research and development and obscurity and kind of always on the fringe into interacting at a professional level with, you know, almost hundred over hundred people over a long period of time to bring about what has to occur. And the interaction with the other facilitators, the interaction with everybody. And I find for all of us, I think that's the big piece of the puzzle, right? Where we all have these kind of internal blocks that we come across when we're being presented with new ways of interacting with human beings or even old ways. Just basic interaction with human beings <laughs> leads to so many different things. So I think that's another big piece of the puzzle, at least, at least for me, but I would imagine for everybody. And then there's a seventh really problem or challenge. And I, I, I'm putting your particular focus points in here of the 
individual growth, facilitator training, collective intelligence, universal flow, topic growth, vibrational coherence, and the God view. And I'm doing that as a lead in into the next section to show how the tools that I have are going to help you specifically within what you're focusing on. And I guess what I was doing with these other problems or challenges is bringing in, I guess, my own assessment, a little independent of your own, of looking at, okay, this is what you want, um, but there's these other sort of challenges and problems that are sort of there in the meantime that if we don't address or look at, I think that it's going to be sort of difficult, let's say, to achieve the bigger goals of what, what, what is going to occur. So uh, this is just going to be the start of me leading into focusing on what you have asked for and then showing how uh, I'm going to approach that. The starting point I use with all clients is the five communication spaces model. And what I found is that this is the first conceptual model to use in building the inflow matrix after the paradigm structuring map. Uh, I won't go into that right now. But it's basically five spaces that create the distinct boundaries between the types of communication that takes place. First, you start with personal space, and that's just you. Nobody else. Your own little world. Only you. And then you have the one-on-one -on -one space, which is you and somebody else. These are, of course, very distinct uh, differences. And then you go to group space as soon as you add a third person. And the fourth is the community space, where you go into the larger arena of where humans interact, where there isn't the distinction of the group spaces as much. But group spaces and individual and one-on-one -on -one spaces do occur within the community space. So in Lociel's foundation, it would be the community space would be everyone all together, but also a space that is kind of, it doesn't have to be everyone there together. It's just like the community space. It's just non-team space. It's not the individual. It's not one-on-one. -on -one. It's kind of everything else. And then finally, you have the sacred space, and that's bringing in the divine, and that's creating a distinction of sort of, when spirit is present and when it is acknowledged and when you want to utilize your connection to spirit. Now, of course, all the spaces would have sacred space within them, but it's sort of creating a distinct place for spirit that's acknowledged. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect the five communication spaces model into the five areas that you have put forward as, as how you want to organize this proposal and then break down in each area what I'm going to put forward as being uh, my offering. The first integration point is between the personal space and the personal growth. And what we're looking to do here is to see how to connect into your inner world, your growth within that, and the connection with everything else going on in the Lassie Foundation's mission and how the teams are working together. So I think that's a pretty good connection between those two. It's pretty obvious. Internal world and your personal growth. The next integration point is between the one-on-one uh, -on -one space and facilitator training. And I think in order to proceed, the facilitator is a very, very focused point of bringing everything together. And I have a lot of experience with facilitation and tools for facilitators. And so looking at how to train the facilitators, both in the one-on-one -on -one coaching and both in the team space situations is going to be very important and where our models connect. The third type of space, the group space, connects very well with your uh, topic group vibrational coherence in a quite an obvious way. And that is the link between the model there so one of the big parts of the inflow matrix is its assumption that it can connect to any other conceptual model out there and integrate with it and then utilize the strengths of both of them and find the connection points between both of them. 
So what I just did is connect into the five communication spaces model, which is the primary model of starting the inflow matrix, into the five areas that you would like to focus on in this proposal. And so now I'll go into greater depth about what specific things I will be doing within each one of these five areas. And so these five spaces are the foundational element of distinguishing the types of communication that do take place in, in reality. And so that's where I start with, and that's what this model is here. So one of the big parts of the inflow matrix is its assumption that it can connect to any other conceptual model out there and integrate with it and then utilize the strengths of both of them and find the connection points between both of them. So what I just did is connect into the five communication spaces model, which is the primary model of starting the inflow matrix, into the five areas that you would like to focus on in this proposal. And so now I'll go into greater depth about what specific things I will be doing within each one of these five areas. So what, one of the key parts of being in a shared knowledge community or utilizing the inflow matrix operating system is within the framework you design your ideal job and you're using your gifts, you're using your talents, you're using your skills within specific positions where they match. And on teams what you're doing is you're utilizing everyone's strengths and bringing together the people's weaknesses and other people covering for it. And so your ideal job is really focusing on what do you really want to do, what are you great at doing, and who do you want to work with on which team. And so utilizing the power of the gene keys and the human design and the expertise of Darmendra, uh, what I would do is look to see how that fits in to this larger framework and how the person can really utilize the maps and tools of the new paradigm toolkit to design your ideal job. We live in a world that is moving so fast, it's hard to keep up. And the online team virtual environment is the main uh, platform for businesses today. So the amount of communication you do and the type of communication you do is, is at the core of your whole business system. Facilitation is rising as a skill set within a business. You can't waste 10 people's time for two hours because one person talks too much or you didn't get on target and uh, one person had a healing traumatic breakdown. It, it, it stops the momentum of your business. And if you have a leader who dominates or you have uh, key things that aren't discussed, that need to be discussed, that are hard to be discussed, uh, your enterprise is not going to do well. So there's a lot of facilitators out there or people who could be facilitators out there that need training towards getting the group towards the goals of the team. The new paradigm toolkit is focused on five elements and these five elements are a rare combination of different tools that together help people to learn, create, communicate and heal together. So the first are maps and the maps are cognitive maps, they're mind maps, they're the ways we architect and blueprint everything in the world and it shows how the parts come together in holes. And so the inflow matrix is actually a series of maps that form an architecture to share knowledge in the world. And so in the new paradigm toolkit, the maps are a starting point for people to understand and create shared reference points in order to design their ideal job, in order to build their shared knowledge communities, and in order to move into the new paradigm. Now, there are also card sets and game boards. And the card sets work with the game boards. They don't necessarily have to always work with them. But they're, again, sort of taking information and putting them onto individual moving parts. So you, you don't get stuck by the grammar of our language. You can start to move the concepts around on sacred geometry 
and start to see a new methodology of organizing information in your mind and creating again a shared reference point mentally for people to work together. And so the cards are very uh, well utilized in forms of divination. It takes the tarot and sort of quantum jumps it into a whole other world of multidimensional sort of business thinking. And the inflow matrix is this whole thinking system of all these different concepts put together on paper and maps, but then you take the individual parts, put them on cards, and now you can start to play with them in a lot of different ways to create billions of different patterns of seeing how these different concepts uh, can work together. And it opens up a whole new field of sort of information graphics and the way that we sort of uh, start to work with conceptual concepts together. And the game boards are utilized to bring teams together to do these larger divinations and to be used in a game-like format to create a conversational uh, interconnection that is very unique and I've never seen it before where people get a very deep listening. People are very um, intent on creating a great listening space for whose ever turn it is. And uh, it's again, sort of a, a, a different type of methodology because divination has not necessarily been used in our culture much, especially in business. But over and over again, it proves itself to show things which you would never see before and stimulate conversations that you've never heard before. Uh, finally, there's two others. There's the processes. So we've got maps, card sets, game boards, and processes. And the processes are basically utilizing the other three tools and any other tools that you're using and looking at processes as a very important part to sort of look at specifically on its own. And then finally, software and bringing together uh, software and apps and all the other infotech that is out there plus some unique software that we're creating right now that I'll, I'll show you and see where that's at. So the five of them, maps, card sets, game boards, processes, and software, are a unique combination within this new paradigm toolkit which help individuals, teams, organizations, and communities to move from the old paradigm to the new paradigm. And that is one of the sort of unique potpourri's I'm bringing to the table, including some tables, uh, to this uh, very, very important potential interaction with the CL Foundation. You know, there are so many different maps, card sets, game boards, uh, processes and software that I have in the new Paradigm Toolkit. I'm just going to put forward two, two that I think are very significant. Uh, and one of the conversation type cards and in, within the conscious communication card deck and the chat frenzy software that is in prototype stage now. And I would like to say a little bit about them. One of the card sets is called the conscious communication card set that has a values deck, a conversation type deck, and then four decks, the choice lens deck, the flow lens deck, the synergy lens deck, and the Harmony Lens deck. Now the Harmony Lens, they are related to the community. The Synergy Lens is, is related to the organization. The Flow Lens is linked to the outer you. And the Choice Lens is linked to the inner you. And so when you create a basic spell, you choose a values card a conversation card and let's say a choice lens and so what you're doing is you're putting together intention and attention in a field <clears throat> so the intention are the values and the attention are the four levels of conceptual lenses that connect into Ken Wilbur's inner you, outer you, inner group, outer group. And so you create these spells and these spells are used to create conversational contexts for the type of conversation that you're going to have. And this is going to be shown later in a software program called Chat Frenzy 
<laughs> where these spells are used to specifically denote what type of conversation that you're going to have. And so this is just one of the tools of the new paradigm toolkit. It's called the conscious communication card set. And there are six decks in it. And I, I sent to you this deck, which has all the different conversation cards. And this is quite a breakthrough. Of all the tools probably created, I think the conscious, uh, the, the conversation types could be the most powerful in terms of the ability to designate very specifically what type of conversation that you're in. And I'll list them here. I'll put them all down so you can take a look. But what we're learning is to move from one conversation to another type of conversation to another type of conversation in a process in order to achieve the goals of the group. And so this is one of the main offerings that I, I would be bringing would be to teach facilitators and everybody how to use the card decks to do so many different things. You can design programs, you can uh, design stories, you can design movies, you can design uh, pretty much anything that involves communication.
So what we have here is a software program that for now is called Chat Frenzy. And what it is, it's a way to specifically configure a chat room for a specific kind of conversation that is very, very specific. And so different models from the inflow matrix and some tools from the new paradigm toolkit are put together here. And I'll take you through an example. This is not finished. Uh, we're in the middle of making it, but this would be one of the tools which I would like to bring into the picture at some point. And so at the beginning, and this is also teaching a bit about the inflow matrix, there are six meta conversational fields that are used to distinguish the kind of conversation you are in. So there's the social field, the service field, the business field, the friendship field, the intimate field, and the family field. Now, the family field uh, could be your spiritual family, but let's say we're just looking at your blood family, specific to the family. Uh, intimate is more sort of when you're very close, one-on-one, -on -one, um, sort of going deeper than most of the other fields. Friendship field, just basically friends getting together. There's no business interactions. You're not trying to do anything, but you have a closeness business field, there is some sort of money transaction taking place or, or at some point to take place. Service field, you're getting together to do some work to help someone or something, but you're not being paid. And the social field, which is basically all the interactions that happen between humans in general. Uh, these fields can come together in different ways. Uh, like you could have a family field in a social field, you could have an intimate field in a friendship field. But we're looking at distinguishing these six fields as being distinctly different from one another in terms of the type of communication that takes place. So let's just say we take business field and let's say we're looking at bringing this into uh, the last CL foundation into one of the teams, let's say for the first time. So we choose a business field and then we have the five spaces, which I've already gone through in terms of the initial model where you have the personal space, the one-on-one -on -one space, the sacred space, the group space, and the community space. Now, when you cross-index these six fields with five spaces, you have 30 potentialities that creates a matrix of all the possible meta-conversations that you can have. And these create a very distinctive difference between them, which is useful in creating the context for the conversation that you're in. So let's just say we, we choose the group space and a business field. Now, if you look, we have a methodology of assigning, assigning points to turn it into a game to look at how we can quantify the value of certain types of conversations. And the points align with the five spaces. We don't have points for the sacred space, but we have points for the personal space, the one-on-one -on -one space, the group space, and the community space. And so when you start to see how all the models work together, it becomes very useful uh, because there's a way of aligning different things together when you use the same models. So whenever you come to a new step of what you don't quite know what to do, you've got a, <laughs> a whole large group of models which you can use to test which ones will work or which ones are more appropriate for that particular context. So let's just say in the one-on-one -on -one points, or let's say the group points, we put, say, 500 points. We accept that. Now, next we go to the main area of activity, and there are four main areas of activities. We have the one-on-one -on -one interaction. We have superhero teams. We have the shared knowledge community team and issue coalitions. And within the superhero team, we have media teams as well. Um, so we just chose a media team on a superhero team. And <clears throat> let's say they come together for the first time and their mission step object objective is make a video that explains your purpose.
So, and then mission step, we have seven steps, the start, the setup, the build up, the crescendo, the ease out, connect and unify and finish. This is the process map that is very integral to the inflow matrix of having the same seven steps to finish a process. So let's say we're doing a start. Now we have the ability to go further into detail on what that conversation is going to be. And there's this way of creating a spell where you put values, conversation types, and conceptual lenses together. And I'll show you how that's done. And you can either do it through choice or you can do it randomly. Now, if you look at choice for values, you have over a, about 100 values that you can choose. And you may not know what you want. You can go through them all and all of a sudden find one. But let's say we want some clarity and we're going to choose Now, each of these is a business function, again, within the inflow matrix that is on another map that you'll get at some point. Now, if we look at interfacing, credibility, enrollment, first contact, gifting, needs analysis, negotiation, presentation, team follow-up, all of these are different types of conversations. And this is a card set that comes with the uh, com conscious communication card set. So let's say we're looking at first contact. It's the first time of getting together. And you can randomly choose where or you can choose and Look at all of the different methodologies of words that are in the different levels. Let's say it's going to take you three days. So you're going to keep it private. Now, this is the beginning of a configuration for a chat room that puts together the meta conversation types, points, mission step, which team it is, and very specific to the type of conversation that it is. Now, this all may be kind of googly goat to you uh, because you don't know all these different pieces. And it's certainly a first stab at a software program that eventually this would spit out a chat room that you would invite your team to and that you'd have a certain time period to get the mission done, and then you get certain points assigned to it. And so that's looking at how do we turn this whole idea into a game where the types of conversations that you're having are very exact, and you're ending up with a specific end goal, uh, and you're getting better and better at reaching these goals, and the facilitators are getting better and better at utilizing the tools to assist the people to reach the goals. So this is just a, a beginning, but I just wanted you to see that. If you've ever seen the movie, The Corporation, it's a documentary, and if you haven't, I recommend it. It talks about how the corporation as an entity has the same characteristics as a uh, psychopath human being. And if we're looking at the old paradigm, the cell, the primary reference point of the old economic paradigm is the corporation. And the movie is, is sort of showing how that particular organizational structure is at the heart of why we're, we're, we're on the path to destroying our planet. And so what I've been working on is something called a shared knowledge community, which is another entity which is looking at being the cell or a cell in the new paradigm and as opposed to product or commodity based 
It's gift-based and based upon the human beings and how they interact as teams together to create whatever they want to create. So the shared knowledge community that I'm offering, it, it, it's a structure that you will be pioneering and will be a template like the corporation has been for other organizations and other people to come together in larger groups to uh, take on the larger issues and problems that our species is facing. So as opposed to the reason just to make shareholder profit and to make a few people rich, the reason for the shared knowledge communities is to build a new paradigm and to structure people into their ideal jobs and to uh, deal with the larger issues on the planet that we all have to face. So that's pretty exciting. And it's 12 teams of 12 teams and 144 people. And so that was originally when I heard of what you guys were doing and, and your numbering system. That's why I felt there was such a strong connection because 144 is, is, is a very sacred number. And it's also under 150 people where they say after that, that you, you lose touch with your sort of like the people in your organization once it gets that big. So it's a groundbreaking, pioneering potential structure and it hasn't been built yet and I'm currently looking for different groups and, and types of people and organizations that would like to build one and so you're one of the first organizations that this could possibly happen with. You know one of the uh, unique parts of the shared knowledge community is bringing together specific job types that may not necessarily come together in a normal organizational structure. So the first kind are originators, which is basically another name for inventors, but it's looking at anyone who's come up with a new field of knowledge, looking up with someone who's come up with something, you know, very, very new. And originators, like I consider myself to be one with the uh, work that I've been doing, are unique characters. They're not like the others and they have a tendency to focus over long periods of time on one thing to try to again create or invent something and they've gone through a lot and they're generally on the fringe they're generally outside normal thinking they're generally outside of uh, the normal society because they're they want to create something new and they're, they're not necessarily interested in participating in the old paradigm that much uh, other than originators and there's entrepreneurs Everyone kind of knows what an entrepreneur is, but you need people on the team that can sort of uh, generate uh, a new way of doing business. Uh, then there's teachers or, or, or coaches and uh, people to, that are very focused on helping people to learn things. And then there's tech gurus, people that are in the background with all the technology that's necessary. And there's artists and they're being their great flamboyant selves. And there's healers and they're helping everyone to heal. And then there's planetary guardians, which are kind of like activists, but more uh, sort of like closer to being Jedi Knights. And they're the ones out in the field really doing things to help protect Mother Earth and uh, doing it through media and uh, doing it through giving feedback to the species in a different way that is, is, is currently happening. And then there's illuminators or marketers. They're the ones that bring everything into the world. And then there's mediators, they're the ones who you know, help everyone get along. And then there's facilitators, and they're the ones that are helping the groups attain their goals. And then there's uh, youth and elders. So there's 12 councils of 12, and they would be forming a different type of sort of uh, organizational structure with your 13 team structure. So maybe at its most ideal, you might have an originator, an entrepreneur, a teacher, a tech guru, an artist, a healer, a planetary guardian, illuminator, mediator, facilitator, youth and elder on each team. And then you have a matrix of like a research team, and an infrastructure team, and a learning team, and an operations team, and a creativity team, and a synergy team, and a um, services team, a marketing team, a stewardship team, a facilitators team, elders team, and youth team. And you're creating this matrix of topic versus function. And so when all the researchers come together from all the different teams, 
or all the entrepreneurs come together from all the different teams, you're now bringing together a more collective intelligence around the cross information of the teams with each other. And I think perhaps if all of these 13 teams have been working independently and not with some sort of cross index matrix with the other teams, that you lose something in terms of that collective intelligence and bringing together strengths in ways that you may not have done before. And so I think that's a very big part of uh, the shared knowledge community. And now if you bring in different sort of uh, aspects of the tokens, the blockchain and cryptocurrencies and any other new economic uh, methodologies or processes or tools, all of this would be integrated into the shared knowledge community in a way that sort of fit. Uh, you know, structures are there as a start and then you got to bring together all the different elements in different ways and unique ways and that's just going to happen as you go along. And so it's not a rigid structure, it's just a unique structure that then uh, we're looking to integrate with the structure that you already have. The inflow matrix operating system is a bit of a unique invention. It's looking at operating systems that are in computers and seeing them as being the way that everything's connected together and, and the way that programs and apps all sit on top of the operating system. But we don't really have that for our mind. We don't really have that internally. We have this collection of unconscious patterns and models and understandings and there's no real prime reference point for everyone in your foundation and association and, and, and teams as a reference point to operate, let's say, as a higher level organism or as a sort of living system. So the inflow matrix is putting together a multidimensional sort of approach to life. And one of the main components is Ken Wilber's four quadrants model where you have the inner individual, the outer individual, the inner group, and the outer group. And I've sort of adapted it a bit, and the inner individual is like the choice wheel, the outer individual is the flow wheel, the inner group is the synergy wheel, and the outer group is the harmony wheel. So the outer group is sort of like the community space, the synergy, and the inner group is the, sit, is the group space, the outer you is the flow, is the one-on-one -on -one space, and the inner you is the personal space. And then in the center is the sacred space that's connecting them all together. And so we're beginning to learn to think in multiple levels of seeing. So like a you can take a concept at the community level. And then you could take a concept at the organizational level. And then you could take a concept at the individ outer individual level. And a concept at the inner individual level. And start to see... Whatever you're looking at, whether it's a problem or an issue or uh, anything, through these multiple conceptual lenses, and this is like a new way of thinking. This is a more advanced way of systems thinking where you're taking into account multiple levels and connections of the individual and, and the collective. And so when you have this as a reference point in your mind or everyone's minds, you now have the beginning of a reference point to design your ideal job, to design the shared knowledge communities, to design a new paradigm using a new conceptual structure that can actually distinguish the old from the new paradigm. So, you know, that can be quite a lot for people. <laughs> it's, it's again, you know, it's new and it's works once you start to memorize the maps and what you can do is you can custom design a job you can custom design an organization and you can custom design a community and starting with a value system there's a unique way of putting uh, a value with a particular f function on the um, on the maps and it creates these fields of realization it creates a central reference point for learning it's, um, it's a bit magical that once you create these values maps that you, you begin to have these experiences for you to actually realize these values 
and that's I think a connection into the to the spiritual side of things or the sacred side of things where uh, values like love or mercy or compassion or kindness or courage are all usually parts of most spiritual traditions in terms of what you're supposed to learn or live by and so the inflow matrix has a very unique way of creating individual and group value systems that then can become the the reference point for seeing how people want to interact and work together so there are lots of maps you can go down to different details you can integrate with other maps and it is you know a working system it, it, it hasn't actually been working yet <laughs> with a large enough group of people to see really how it works. So this would be a bit of a research experiment and um, hopefully that you would see the validity in it as we go along. You know, in terms of the sacred space and the God's mm -hmm. view, I would just say that the combination of all of these four parts, the designing your ideal job, the new paradigm toolkit, inflow matrix operating system, and the shared knowledge communities have all been put together with the intention of group enlightenment. Whenever I've had to have some sort of intention towards the maps or, or, or my prayers or whatever I'm doing, that's what has been put forward, seeing that as a, um, a good high aim. And twice I burned my work completely. Uh, I have asked to be used as a conduit to create something good for the species and good for this world. So my intentions in carrying out this work have always had uh, those intentions. And so, you know, it's, it's hard to say where something comes from sometimes. Uh, I might say I'm doing it or something may be coming through me. And most of the time, in the way that I've worked, it's sort of there's a blank slate. Uh, you open up, you start to make some drawings, you start to map, and something comes through. And it's a bit of a magical process. It's not something like, oh, I see, you know, this is what I'm going to do, and that's how it's going to go. And the mind's all hyped about that. It was most of the time I'd sit down and I have no idea what I'm going to do, and the next piece comes out. And then I sort of have to figure out a bit, you know, well, what is it and where does it fit? So, you know, when you're working in these spiritual realms, there's a lot of uh, surrender. There's a lot of trust. There's a lot of faith. And then you sort of see what happens. And I think that's how you have been operating, uh, if you always go by guidance. So I think in terms of the God's view in sacred space, there's not actually a lot you can say about it. I didn't really put a, a thing I was going to do because you know, I wouldn't be doing anything within that. Um, I just think, you know, there's a grace that occurs to all of us when we have high aims <clears throat> and we, you know, look for the, the greater good for the species. And then, you know, sort of miracles kind of do happen. And I think that's probably going to be a, a big part of what's going to happen. Uh, you know, we're, we're going into something that is at a, a very critical point in our species evolution. And I, I really, this, this is one of the main reasons I want to get involved is because uh, I see that you have a very, you know, pure aim and good hearts. And you're doing it for the right reasons. And I feel that, you know, I, I just couldn't participate in old paradigm activities. And I couldn't really bring my work into something that wasn't in the line with, you know, the highest vision for our species. And, I, and that's why I think I'm here right now uh, talking with you. And I'm very honored uh, to have this chance. And um, I really look forward to whatever does come out of this. I think it's going to be pretty amazing. You know, in, in so many of my interactions, I've made the, 
fatal mistake of too much information too quickly and I overwhelm people and I've done this over and over again and it seems uh, no matter how simple I think I'm, ma I'm making it I I've forgotten kind of where I've got to and uh, things that I think are just simple or normal or the beginning are very new to people and uh, you know that, that's made me you know a bit wary of my own I guess capacity to monitor what is a good amount to give somebody in the amount of time that I'm with them and when I was doing some online teaching I was doing one map per session per team and every week we would just do one map and one map and one map and that seemed to work out pretty well and so in this presentation you might notice that I'm not really giving a lot of the maps or a lot of the tools or showing you uh, an overabundance of let's say what I would bring to the table for that reason I uh, I think that for spiritually guided people they, they really have a, a limit of how many mental structures they want to play with and everything has to be done in its due time and since I seem to be always a little too much ahead of the game and pressing forward too fast I've had to really learn to slow down and slow down and slow down and slow down and, and slow down to the point where I don't really know how to proceed. And so working with other people, working with uh, people who have a better read of the situation that can translate and, and assist is, is going to be very helpful. And I've been a bit of a, a lone wolf but designing team and community level structures. So that's a bit of a, you know, one of the many ironies that I face with my own work. So I just wanted to kind of say that uh, because I feel when I started out, I, 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 you know, I, I want to sh share the whole elephant and, uh, you know, even a trunk is a lot. So I don't know if I conveyed uh, that well what I have, but I, I look forward to hearing your responses. How do you share 25 years of work with people who all have different worldviews, all have brilliant gifts, all are doing their own thing? and try to create a central reference point in the collective mind so that we can build a new paradigm together.